In this week's book club, we're going to be covering epigenetics and venturing beyond the surface of aging and to discover actually the realm where time's effects can be paused or even reversed, like turning back time, quite literally, or at least turning back time's effects. So imagine ancient seeds springing to life after eons, eons, or Dolly the sheep whose birth from an adult cell rewrote the narrative of biological destiny illustrating that our cells aging can be completely reset. If you're interested in this, everyone, please keep watching. We have an exciting episode this week for our How Not to Age book club. Welcome, welcome back. I'm really excited to have you back here today. I've really been enjoying and doing these book club sessions with you all. And I just have to say, this week's session, we're going to be switching up a little bit. I'm trying to shorten the session a little more to have more concise information. And from now on, we're going to do a shorter summary to give you guys the chance and opportunity to read the information as well. Although I will be providing some key insights that I think are pretty key insights, quite literally, important insights that for you to keep in mind, or if you don't have the book, things you might want to look into that you might be interested in, and then doing a, instead of doing reflections, then I'm going to do questions, as well as a discussion from the questions that I list, so I can provide kind of my personal insight or what I would do to give you some ideas or some guidelines you could possibly follow as well. So starting off with our summary for this week, uh, epigenetics, the science is, is the science of what lies above genetics, okay? So genetics is the if you think of it, it's the ATCG, the little double helix, winding helix of what what encodes, like it encodes everything that our body's made of, right? However, there's epigenetics, which is kind of like, they call it kind of like the orchestrator or not orchestrator. Well, yeah, it is orchestrator, the conductor of the orchestra. So it's acting as a, it's through DNA methylation and it tells, it tells your DNA really what genes are going to be turned on or off quite literally like little switches on a switchboard. It's like, okay, I don't think we need this right now. We're gonna turn off this gene, tell it to take a break, calm down for a bit, and we're gonna turn this one up instead. That is kind of epigenetics. It turns genes on and off and it's very dynamic. It's a very dynamic system that is constantly fluctuating and adjusting to our current needs or current demands, current environment. And this process is not, it's not fixed at all. It's dynamically responds to our lifestyle, our diet, and even your environment, illustrating that our daily choices have a profound power to influence our genetic legacy. So central to this narrative is the epigenetic clock. I didn't even know about this actually, but there's an epigenetic clock and it's a considered a cutting edge tool that reveals our biological age, offering a more accurate reflection of our health and longevity than the calendar years we've accumulated. Okay, it's a concept that turns the abstract into actionable, suggesting that through mindful choices in diet, exercise, and even stress management, we can actually potentially slow the ticking of our biological clocks. Because think of it this way, as we venture through life, you know, this week, I've eaten this and this and this, this thing. Okay, I've eaten these meals and this is how they've affected me. But that concept of time, right? That concept is what we think of as aging. We're maturing, but really is it affecting our genes the same manner, right? How is our genes being affected? And the things that's affecting us, can we reverse it? Can we reverse its, its effects on our genes and then what, how can we change how it's affected? And not only can we reverse it, but can we actually turn it back even more? Can we, I guess that is reversing quite little. That's reversing it back to the original state. So there's a lot of things we can do. We can slow it down and then there's also reversal. So that's, it's a biological clock. It's not, it's not merely dependent on the time that's passing by, but also by the activities we do during that time or after that time. So the, this chapter highlights the impact of diet and lifestyle as always on our epigenetic markers. This sense on epigenetic markers, especially the actual, the role of folic acid. So folic acid is a key nutrient influencing DNA methylation. And it paints a picture that, you know, a future we're understanding and we're understanding and modifying your gen epigenetic profile could lead to a longer and healthier life. So keep following, keep tuning in if you want to know what these things are. So that's my summary for now. And if you have any questions or if you've read the book, if there's something else that you got out of it, let me know. And here are some of my key insights. Trying to keep this video short and snappy for you all. Key insights. Uh, number one, everyone, it's pretty much the idea of a great reset. Okay. So did you know that every cell in our body has the potential to rewind its aging clock? Literally every cell. Okay, so from the ancient dates, the date pits that Dr. Gerger mentioned, to the dolly the sheep, 
Nature and science has showed us that biological age can indeed be reset. And Dolly's creation from an adult cell demonstrated that even mature cells, cells that have gone through that, that impact of time and life, can actually be rejuvenated, bringing it back to an original state, essentially turning back their molecular clocks okay, to an embryonic state, challenging our previous notions of really what is cellular aging. Now, notion number two is the idea of epigenetic clocks. Like, like I said earlier, I didn't know what that was, right? So our bodies harbor a molecular, I, I didn't want to say this, but it's like a, it's like a crystal ball. <laughs> it's an epigenetic clock that can predict our biological age and probably even our lifespan. That was shocking to me, a lifespan based on DNA methylation patterns. And these clocks are a fascinating tool offering a, a glimpse into our true biological age, not just not just like a like a geographical demographical what age are we perceived based on how much time we've lived on this carbon this, this earth right but there's a there's a biological age based on how long does how long has the cell been functioning for and how much damage has it received and how much more lifespan if you will does this cell have how much of a health stand does it still have so this this is actually pretty significant you, you recognize that our biological our true biological age can differ significantly from our chronological age depending on our lifestyle choices and environment exposures so that's i have a lot of things to say about that in terms of the blueprint but if any if any of you have heard of the blueprint let me know or oh, let's not get distracted but let me know number three is lifestyle's powerful influence and i know we talked about this a lot and we pretty much talk about this in every episode because it's a book on nutrition but it's clear again that what we eat and how much we move and even our stress levels can actually speed up or slow down our epigenetic clocks, right? If you look at the centenarians, how come they have a different clock compared to others? Some people look, have you ever heard of people who are like, well, he's like a, a, a young 60 or a young 70 or, or an old 30, you know what I'm saying? Say like, just because we've experienced same amount of, same amount of years on this earth, that doesn't mean we, we age the same, whether it's spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, there's so many different methods or ways of aging or how we are impacted by time. So once again, yes, our daily choices have the power to shape our genetic destiny. And this insight should really empower us with the knowledge that by adopting a healthier lifestyle, we can influence our genetic expression, potentially slowing down the aging process and improving our quality of life. And number four, diet's role in aging. I know, we, I know we talked about aging diet earlier, but this one's a little bit different because here we also talk about how even from the humble honeybee, even the honeybee to us humans, diet plays a pivotal role. So those of you who didn't read the book yet, this book, you can look up honeybee or look up royal jelly honeybee, look up royal jelly. And it shows that the, the diet of the honeybee larva, it's not the genetics. It's not the genetics. The, they're all genetically identical. Yet the diet of the honeybee larva determines whether it will become a worker bee or a queen bee with the latter living a significantly longer period of time due to the consumption of royal jelly. And this a dramatic effect of diet on lifespan fu and function pretty much illustrates the potential of nutrition in influencing our own aging process. So that was mind blowing to me. I've never heard of that before. So that was absolutely mind blowing. And moving on, everyone, I do have some, I'm keeping it short, just four questions this time, and I will also provide my answers as well. And if you have your answers, feel free to post below or comment below so I can hear from you as well. So question number one, everyone, is how does the story of Dolly the Sheep challenge your views on aging and genetics, right? Because, I don't know, y'all, I, I thought about a lot of things. You know, I, I thought about even when I was in high school, middle school, we're hearing about printing, printing organs or literally growing organs from singular cells, and I thought that was fascinating, right? So, so the story of Dolly the sheep revolutionizes our understanding of aging and genetics by proving that the age of a cell can be reset. So it, to me, it challenges the fatalistic view, the fatalistic view that it always ends and we, we can only live until a certain age and we all die at that point. That's a very fatalistic view. That view has been challenged in my mind. It's We've thought of it as irreversible, like we have to get this. And if you watched my last episode on you versus dementia, you know, all, all these things are suddenly reversible in my mind and it opens up the possibilities of cellular rejuvenation and extending our health span through scientific advancements so that was my take after reading about dolly the sheep number two everyone is in what ways can you tweak your lifestyle to positively impact your epigenetic age everyone i will say i mean that's the point of this book right it, it is like I think he calls it food for thought as well so if you look at it and see how how you can improve um 
I highly imp- like encourage you to tell me what you would like to do to improve your epigenetic age because they're all a little bit different. Well, actually, they're not very different. They're all very similar. And if, and if you know the answer, you should tell me right below because it's a very simple answer, but yet, yet complicated. If you choose, it can be as complex as you want it to be, yet as simple as you want it to be. But anyways, the simple lifestyle tweaks can have profound impacts on our epigenetic age, such as the ones Dr. Greger mentions, is having a diet, a diet rich in fruits and vegetables and whole grains, engaging in regular physical activity, yay, good jobs, and uh, managing your stress through mindfulness or meditation, and avoiding harmful habits like smoking and excessive, I think it was alcohol consumption. So all of these changes can promote healthier gene expression and potentially slow down the aging process. So those of us who are upset about genetics of anything, you know, for me, for example, I have some health issues. I have a bad back, and I know I have some degenerative issues. So for me, it's like, well, that might already be happening, but the power of my food, my influences, the, the, my environment, those are all things I can do to positively regulate my health, right? So that's for me, everyone. Number three, everyone, uh, what does the transformation from a worker bee to queen bee reveal about the power of diet in our genetics, everyone? What do you think about that? Because the transformation from a worker to queen, like, it's not just... It's not just at, like, I guess it, it is from the larval stage is what they said, but it, it highlights to me the, imp- the, the incredible impact that nutrition can have on our genetic expression and overall health. Like, we already knew about overall health based on, you know, what we've been talking about for the past few episodes, but to show that it's being impacted on a, on a genetic level, like literal genetic level, you, so you cannot change what is being written in your, your DNA. If you've seen uh, Gattaca, right? All of that stuff is passed from appearance. You get half a copy from your mom, half a copy from your dad, and that is gonna be your genetic makeup for your life, okay? And when you have errors in those genetic makeup, that's usually when diseases happen or when tumors start appearing. That's when cancer happens, right? Because there's a genetic defect that's allowing these, these cells to proliferate and form a tumor. So those are things that usually is bad. But then you're recognizing here that through epigenetics, we have the power to turn up or turn down and regulate these g- genetic expressions. So I don't know, y'all, if we can actually regulate our genetic expressions over our health by food. It's, I, it's not that if we can. It's that it's sh- it, it has shown through the honeybee example that we can. It suggests that the food that we eat can activate or silent or can activate or silence certain genes therefore influencing our longevity health and even our reprodu- no, reproductive capabilities much like the royal jelly bee does for bees and if you're curious about the reproductive capabilities uh look up this name i'm going to put it right here i don't remember the name right but there's these crabs that they literally change sexes like they do change sexes so so it is completely like they're born the dna is not going to change but the epi- I'm going to bet now it's most likely an epigenetic change. So anyways, question number four, if I get on another tangent, how might understanding your epigenetic clock change your or change your lifestyle, right? So, okay, I feel like this is, this is, I feel like I'm going in circles a little bit here, but I want to say that knowing, for me at least, knowing my epigenetic clock can provide a clearer picture. It's, it's like before, it's just like a black box. You're like, oh yeah, it makes a difference, but really how much difference and what kind of difference? So really understanding here, knowing that it can actually change your chronological age, your biological age, like this should motivate you to adopt a healthier lifestyle in order to improve your epigenetic age. So it can serve as a powerful reminder that, you know, uh, each of your daily actions and environment significantly influences our genetic expression. Therefore, encouraging us to make choices and uh, choices that support a healthier and longer life. So everybody, that is my shortened version of our episode today. And I'm really glad that you tuned in. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. Uh, please, if you have time, please like, subscribe, and let me know. Uh, oh, my Twitter handle is always there. I'm so glad when I hear from you guys all the time. So if you have other questions, I always welcome them. And next week, we have you guys... Okay, we're going to go into a little bit. Uh, I have been posting these kind of short little videos on, not shorts yet, I would like to get to that, but shorts on kind of more applicable applicability of specific research studies. So if you might have seen my me versus dementia or vinegar versus fat, let me know how you've been enjoying those and if they are helpful to you because I'm trying to space these out a little bit more to give you time to read and digest information, but they are usually they're usually accompanying videos. Like for example, the vinegar versus fat was meant to accompany AMPK, AMPK activation in one of our first book club videos. And the last one was on, um, I talked about dementia versus spermidine because spermidine was 
one of the key activators of autophagy. So then, you know, so then you can see every episode is going to come with an ap- accompanying video on papers as well as applicability to your life. So let me know if you've been enjoying them and if there's anything I do better, I always welcome feedback. And thank you so much, everyone. I hope to see you soon on our next episode of How Not to Die. Stay curious and stay healthy, everyone. Bye, everybody. Thank you.